Good morning. How are we doing today? Welcome to family service. It's so much fun to all be in here. Why do we do family services? We do these several times a year for a couple reasons. One is we want generations to be in here together, worshiping, praying, and learning God's Word. We also want to say thank you to our amazing City Kids team. So put your hands together for City Kids team members and leaders that help make City Kids experiences happen week in and week out. So this is a, a family service, and you can expect them throughout the year, and, and, and you can always expect them to be a little bit extra fun, extra fun and crazy. Now, how many of you guys ever get inspired to make something, bake something, build something? Any, any creators out there? Yeah. And, and, and like with anything, whether it's, a, whether it's a, a bookshelf from Ikea, there's a picture there on the manual, or maybe it's a German chocolate cake, and there's a picture right there. Why is that picture there? It's to make you feel bad about yourself, right? No, the picture there is because this is what it's supposed to look like. So we're a, we're a pancake family, and so we love pancakes. So my girls were making pancakes several months ago, and we were eating these pancakes, and I thought, these are way better than my pancakes. What's going on? And I look at the, I look at the package, and, and my pancakes on my plate look just like the pancakes on the package. And I'm thinking, I've been missing something. I, I've, been, I've been missing a step. And I said, how did you guys do that? And, and they pointed me, my girls pointed me to like the last step there in the instructions. <laughs> Those are the steps I usually skip. Anybody else? And, and, it, and it says, don't, it, it does, don't overmix and let it sit for a couple minutes. I'm like, don't over mix. Who listens to that? Like, just mix it as much as you can, right? You're supposed to mix it as good as you can. And who has time to let it sit? I just want my pancakes now. That's why I always skip that. And what? that's why my pancakes always turn out not like the pancakes on the box. Maybe, maybe you're like that. And maybe as you, you've made things, you, what should be like five extra screws when you're making a, a bookshelf, you have like 20 and you're like, wait a minute, this isn't, I, I have four shelves, but it's supposed to be five. My, my, my cake isn't three inches thick, it's an inch thick. My, my pancakes are no good. You've got to go back and, and ask yourself, did I miss a step? Or you, know, or you could just give up and do your own thing and make it how you want it and end up with lousy pancakes in a four-shelf instead of a five-shelf bookshelf. The same is true for life. Sometimes we, we get to a point in life and, and, and we look around at it and life doesn't look anything like it does in the package. You see, God has a life for us and it's, it's an amazing life. It's full of purpose. It's a life that, that, that should be thriving. And he's got a picture. But, but a lot of times it, it doesn't feel like that picture. And we can, we can do one of a couple things. We can either just give up. Or we can, you know, work it out on our own, do our own thing. We're so good at that, right? And so good at failing when we do that. Or we could go back to some instructions and we, look, we can look at some steps. We can, we can look at God's plan for our life to see if maybe we skipped a step. Maybe, maybe we thought a step wasn't so important, so we just went around that. Because maybe that step is there for our own good. Maybe that step is there so that our life will be the kind of life that God has for us. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for being a good God, a patient God, a, a loving God, and, and a faithful God who is here in this moment. And God, I pray that you would speak to each one of us, no matter what we're in this room with, no, whether we're, we're, we're feeling up or down, whether we've had a great week or a terrible one, whether, whether we feel like we're we're living the life that you have for us or, or, or we feel like we're just picking up the pieces. We're just trying to catch up. We're just trying to tread water. God, I pray that you would <clears throat> encourage us. I, I pray that you would challenge us. And, and, I, and I pray that you would move our hearts to the place that you want us to be so that we can have the life that you've meant for us to have. God, I pray that you would just continue to change lives all throughout this valley I pray that you would transform, transform lives all around the world because you're a big God and you've got big things in store for us. Thank you for speaking to us here, right here at City View. In Jesus' name, we all said... Amen. Uh, my name is Mark, and I've got the, the privilege of being here on, on the team at City View, and, and I'm just excited about what God has in store as we look ahead to Legacy Sunday, as we look back on the last six years and all that God is doing and has done, and then what He has yet to do, telling you that the best is yet to come, and, and I cannot wait for us to be a part of it together. 
You know, we're in this journey of the book of Mark, the second book of the New Testament, one of the Gospels, one of the, the accounts of Jesus. And as we're looking through these 16 chapters, kind of bouncing around, we're looking at how Jesus was no ordinary Savior. He was no ordinary man. He had no ordinary followers. He had no ordinary love. And in the, over the last couple of weeks, we're looking at how he has no ordinary message. What, what makes Jesus' message extraordinary? I, I want to stop right there, unpack a couple truths, and then we're going to jump in to one of Jesus' message. First thing, uh, uh, why, is, why is Jesus' message extraordinary? It's because Jesus' message goes straight to the heart. Jesus' message goes straight to the heart. He doesn't mess around. He doesn't go over, under, around. He goes right to the heart. What's important about the heart is it's the center of our being, the center of our, of our emotions. It's the center of our will. It's the center of everything that we are, our very identity. And Jesus has the ability with everything that he says, every lesson that he taught to go straight at the heart. Another another key truth that makes Jesus' message so extraordinary is that it's all about transformation, not information. We've never had more information in all of our lives, right? But we've never had so little transformation. Information does not equal transformation. That's why Jesus doesn't give a whole lot of do's and don'ts and lists. He just says, come, follow me. Come and be like me. He goes straight to the heart. And he goes right at transformation. He goes right at what matters. And the third thing that's so easy to look over, and we take this for granted, is the fact that Jesus' message is for everyone. Jesus' message is for everyone. And, and for us now, we, we kind of get that. We're all about equality. and We're trying to, we're trying to make sure that everyone kind of gets their fair share and justice is played out. But back then, thousands of years ago, that was earth-shaking because that meant Jesus was not just for men but for women. Jesus' message and his love well, it wasn't just for the Jews but it was for the non-Jews. Not just for the free but the slaves. There were so many compartments that they had put everyone in in society back then. And Jesus said, this isn't just for this group, not just for the elite, not just for the influencers, not just for the the leaders, not just, no, it was for everyone. And that is so, is so true today. You know, for God so loved the world that God gave, Jesus' message today is for everyone. That includes every single person here in this room. You know, one thing that made Jesus' message so unique is he taught in parables. He loved to, he loved to teach in these stories and, and, and to, to get people wondering, what, what is Jesus about and, and what does he want? And, and make them more curious, make them wanting to lean in, making them want to listen, making them want to ask questions as he pointed people toward truths of his kingdom. And, and today we're going to look at one of those parables that Jesus taught. And and let me just paraphrase his his first telling. This is one of those rare moments where Jesus tells the parables, and then we have in in writing, in the book of Mark, for us, his commentary, his explanation to his disciples. But let's just listen to this initial telling of this first parable. It's the parable of the sower and the seed, and Jesus tells a story something like this. A farmer went out to sow his seed, and as as he cast seed out, some fell among the path. We've got a picture of a path up here. Not a great place to plant seeds, right? I mean, what happens to, what happens to seeds as it falls on the path? A lot of nothing. In fact, in this story Jesus tells, as the seed falls on the path, birds come in and swoop and just, and, and just eat it away. It just goes away and it turns to nothing. Nothing comes out of it. But, but the farmer's not done. The farmer's con- continuing to, to sow his seed. And so he, so he sows seed on some rocky soil. So we got some, we got some, we got some soil that's full of rocks, and and, and the, these plants, they, the, the seeds get planted, a, li, a little bit of roots grow, and so these things sprout up, and they're excited to 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 come out of the ground, but then the, the sun scorches them and, and and burns them away. Why? Because they didn't grow down; they only grew up. But the farmer's not done yet. He's still got some more seed, so he's sowing more seed, and he gets to some. He gets to some soil that's full of weeds and so full of thorns that yes, the seed is planted. Yes, there's some roots that happen. Yes, there's even some growth, but there's no fruit. But alas, there's one last soil, one one last bit of ground that has good soil. And as he as he sows that seed on the good soil, the plants not only are plant the seeds are not only planted, but they grow roots, they grow up, and they bear fruit. You see, they they multiply. They multiply. 
Here, here's, what I want us, here's what I want us to all learn today. Here's what I want us to know. It's a simple truth. You've probably heard it many times, but there's a, there's a second part to it and, it, and it goes like this. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. You know, for some of you, that's what you need to hear today because maybe you've been feeling completely unlovable. You've been feeling like a complete failure. You're looking at your life and it doesn't look anything like it does in the box and you just think, how could anyone love me right now? But I'm here to tell you that Jesus loves you. He loves you right where you're at. He loves who you are and he loves who you're going to become if you'll just let him have his way with your heart. But the second part of this truth says, Jesus loves me, but it's bigger than me. It's bigger than me. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Yes, Jesus loves you, but he loves other people too, and he has a plan to use you to help him love others who need to know and experience his love as well. Let's look at, together at the, the explanation of this parable. So we're, we're, we're going to skip ahead. I like skipping ahead in stories, skipping ahead in movies, getting to the good part. Let's go to the fourth soil in Jesus' explanation, and it says this in Mark chapter 4, verse 20. You could go to the City View app, tap on today's message to follow along with the notes, or you could go to the, 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 the YouVersion Bible app, and we're there under events as well, or pull out your Bible. We're going to be in Mark chapter 4, hanging out there today. Mark chapter 4, verse 20 Jesus says this, remember this is the end of his explanation of this parable. And the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as it had been planted. In other words, these these seeds, they grew up to be who they were called to be. They grew up to be the picture on the package, to be the picture on the box, to fulfill their purpose because seeds are meant to to multiply. Seeds are meant to multiply so that seeds grow and bear fruit, so that those those fruit have seeds and that they go and grow and bear fruit, so that they go and grow and bear fruit. This is God's plan for us. This This is what it looks like to become who Jesus has called us to be. Not just not just to grow, not just to be green, but to multiply. And see others know that this God that we know, know this life that, that we know. So the, the question is, do, do we want to bear fruit? Do we want our, our life to look like God's picture of life for us? And, 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 if, and if you're anything like me at different points in my life, I, I look around and I was like, this, I just don't feel like this is it. Something's wrong. Something's missing. I, I, I invite you to go back with me and look at these three soils as if we're looking back at the steps of the ingredients or, or the, the instructions that God has, has put before us. And he's laid it out so simple. That's what's so wonderful about Jesus. He, he doesn't speak to us in, in difficult terms. He, he brings us simple illustrations so that we can see, so that we can follow so we can learn, so that we can grow. So let's look at what, what perhaps are we missing? Why is it that our life might not match up to, to the life that God has for us? Well, let's go back to Mark chapter 4, verses 14 and 15. We're going to go back to the first part of his explanation and look at the path, look at the rocky soil, and look at the thorns and see what we have to learn and what steps we might need to take. Verses 14 and 15 says this, The farmer plants seed by taking God's word to others. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once to take it away. If you were to plant seeds on this, on this brick, on this path, well, what's going to happen? Nothing. It's just going to sit there on top. And Satan will do whatever it takes to take these seeds away, to remove them like birds will come and peck these seeds away. Satan is still moving across the face of this earth today doing just that. As we, as we watch the news, we see these current events happening. And, and, and if you put your... your your spiritual worldview lenses on, you'll see that Satan is at work and he's removing opportunities for people to hear the gospel. He's orchestrating ways that more people will join him in death and destruction because that's what he does. That's what he calls people to. But there is a God who's also at work. And God is at work moving about the face of this earth as well, making sure those seeds get planted. 
Perhaps there's somebody here in this room and your seed is just sitting there on the top of your heart. It hasn't been planted. It, it has to be planted in order to bear fruit. It has to be planted in order to, to grow roots. This is the very beginning. This is the first step. So my question for you is, do you believe? Do you believe? If, if not, then let today be the day that you say, I believe you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I, I can't do this on my own. I don't know what this looks like yet, but I want you in my life, Jesus, and I believe in you. Because as long as you're, the seed stays on top and it's never planted, it will never be what it's created to be. What about the next soil, the, the rocky soil? Jesus talks about that. He says, the seed on the rocky soil in verses 16 and 17, it represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. Yes, Jesus, I believe. Let's go change the world. Woo! And off you go. And then trouble hits. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. We've seen that happen. We've seen people get excited about something, and then a few weeks later, a few months later, the excitement's fizzled, there's no roots, and then it's on to the next thing. Here's something we got to learn when it comes to becoming the person that God has called us to be, to, to multiplying, to bearing fruit, is it's roots before fruits. That's probably not grammatically correct, but we'll just roll with it. It's a lot more fun to say. Roots before fruits. What does that mean? It means you've got to grow down before you grow up. But we're all excited. We're all enamored. We're all in love with what our eyes can see. Nobody walks up to a, a, a tree, right, and says, wow, look at, those, look at those roots. It's pretty amazing. Quite beautiful. I want some of those. No, we look at the fruit. We look at the juicy fruit. We look at the ripe fruit. We look at things that our eyes can see. And if we're not careful, we skip the step of roots as we go toward fruit, and then we wonder why we're not bearing any fruit, and we, and we give up. Our excitement's gone, and, and so are we. That, that's, not, that's not what Jesus has for us. That's, that's not what he wants. I remember... My first mission trip, I was in eighth grade, and I got, I got to go to Mexico with our youth group and build houses there in Tijuana with a, a, a More Ministries, an organization that's still um, just ministering to, to the people of northern Mexico. It's an amazing thing. And, and I remember in all my, my wisdom of my eighth grade self, I got there, and I said, yeah, let's do it. And day one, I bend down and I grab the hammer and the nails. It's like, let's build a house. And they say, no, Mark, <laughs> you got it all wrong. Put that down. And they, they handed me a shovel and they handed me a rake. And I thought, what's this for? And they said, we're going to prep the foundation first. Prep the foundation. The, the what? You mean the foundation's not done? We got to do that too? And so we, the whole first day, we're just raking and leveling and lodging out the big rocks so that we can make a place for the foundation. And then I thought, okay, day two, let's build a house. Hammer and nails, wrong again, Mark. Here's a wheelbarrow. Now you got you to gotta mix the cement. And, and you got to take one wheelbarrow at a time of cement and another wheelbarrow and another wheelbarrow. Why? Because the foundation is important. The foundation of a house is like the roots of a plant. If, if, I, put, if I put seeds here, and, and this, the, the seeds are going to get down into the dirt, and they're going to grow up, and they're going to be really excited, but come a week or two later, the Phoenix Sun is going to shrivel them to nothing because they didn't grow roots because there were too many rocks to allow them to do so. You see, it's that middle, it's the hardest part. It's the hardest place to be. You know, when you just begin something, whether it's a relationship, having kids, a career, school, you're excited, you've got momentum, right? When you're at, you're at the end of something, you can at least see the light at the end of the tunnel. You've got hope, man. Retirement's here soon, or the kids are about to graduate, or graduation is just around the corner. But in that middle, oh, the middle, that's where it gets rough. You're way too far from the beginning. You're way too far from the end, and you know it. 
You know, it's that time with, you know, school's, school's in, a couple weeks are in, and, uh, and homework's getting real, papers are getting real, excitement is nowhere to be seen, and neither is fall break, and neither is Christmas break. You're right there in the middle. We've all been there in the middle of something. We've also all maybe been in the middle of our adventure with Jesus, our journey with Jesus. The excitement maybe of, of the beginning is gone, and we're just kind of stuck, Jesus wants to get us unstuck. He wants to help us in that middle time grow roots. During that time, grow the things that are necessary for us to become who he's called us to be. Even though that middle time is hard, it's so important to hold on, to not give up, to not go back, but to not skip the middle You cannot skip those middle steps. They're just as important as the end. They're just as important as growing fruit. You've got to get those roots first. That's that's why we do things like city groups. You know what happens at city groups? Roots. You know what happens when, when, when people serve? Roots. You know what happens to kids and city kids' experiences? Roots. You know what happens with youth when they come here on Sunday nights for City View Youth? Roots. You know what happens when we go to places like Park Meadows and we serve and we love our schools? Roots. Those are the th- those are the opportunities. Those are the, those are those are ways that we can grow our relationship with God so that when the time comes, we're ready to bear fruit. Times that we we spend with Jesus that nobody else sees. Roots. We've got to grow roots so that we can be the people that God has called us to be. This this third soil, this is the thorns, the weeds, it's found in verses 18 and 19. Jesus continues, the seed that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of wealth, and the desire for other things. So as the seeds are, are scattered here, Right here we see examples of the worries of this life. The lure of wealth and the desire for other things. These these thorns, they hurt. And as they as they scrape your flesh, you bleed slowly, right? What are you bleeding out? You're bleeding out your purpose. Because thorns kill purpose. They're subtle because you can can be planted among the thorns. You can even grow roots among the thorns. You can even grow among the thorns, but you will never bear fruit among the thorns. We have way too many people that believe in Jesus, but that are fruitless. They're purposeless. And it's because of these these thorns. These thorns, they represent our worries. What's something you're worried about today? Name it. Give it to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I, I, I can't handle this. This has just got me and it's, it's choking me out. Give it to him. Isn't it ironic that when we worry or, or we trust in money to meet our needs, Jesus is just standing there like, hey, hello. I'm, I, I can do that. I can meet that need. I could fulfill you. I could take care of that worry. I can meet that desire. I can do what money can never do. You see, Jesus' promises are so good. And he promises to always be with us. He promises to meet our every need. He he promises to... He's going to give you your heart's desires. But when we go after these weeds, we get choked out. We get crowded out. And our purpose fades. And we kind of live a defeated life. Yeah, we believe in Jesus. Yeah, we go to church. But we just kind of stand there looking fruitless because of those worries. Because of that love of money. Because of the desires for for other things. I just encourage you to think of like, what, what, what could that be for me? What's a thorn that's getting me right now? Is it, is it worry? Is it, is, it, is it a love of money? Is it, is it a career that, that, that won't say stop? Is it, is it a relationship that, it, that isn't taking me in the direction that Jesus wants for me? Is it, 
Is it my selfishness that just says, no, God, I, I, I don't want to do that. No, God, I, I don't want to invest that. No, God, I, I, I don't want to use my time that way. What, what could it be? You ever see a crawling eagle or a cheetah that just walks around? It's kind of ridiculous. And that's what a fruitless Christian looks like. It just doesn't make sense. It's not who God has called us to be. You see, Jesus' message was designed to go in you and through you. It wasn't designed to end with you. You see, if you were the only person on the face of this earth, would Jesus have come to die for you on the cross to give you new life? Yes. But the truth is, this earth is filled with billions of people, and that's why we can say Jesus loves me, but it's bigger than me. Jesus loves me, but i got to take it to the world. i gotta, I got to take it to the nations. i got to let somebody else know. If you got baptized because somebody kind of nudged you, somebody kind of invited you, somebody asked you to get baptized as your next step, would you stand up? Okay, well, we're having baptism next month, so consider the invitation. How about this? If you started serving because somebody asked you to start serving or invited you to serve, stand up. If somebody invited you to church and that's why you started going to church, go ahead and stand up. If somebody had ever given you a Bible in your life, stand up. What you're seeing right now, people standing up, this is just a few examples. What you see is people standing up, those are fruit of other people's lives. Those are the fruit of other people's obedience. Because they asked, because they reached out, because they had a conversation, you guys can go and take a seat. You are the fruit that resulted from that. So the question is, how about your fruit? Are there people coming to church here because you invited them? Are there people getting baptized because you asked them? Are there people serving because you are an influence in their life? Are there people walking with Jesus because of your example? That's what fruit looks like. That's what the life on the box looks like for you, straight from God, because Jesus loves you, but it's bigger than you. You see, God is, God is moving. God is shaking. God is freeing and liberating and saving lives all around the world. And the question is, are you in? Or do you want your life to be moved? Do you want your heart to be moved by a God who has so much in store for you? And He's just asking you to, to simply get planted. Believe. Grow roots. Even though it's not always cool and it's not always fun and nobody might ever see it. He's asking you to, to just stay away from the weeds, stay away from the, the thorns, and, and, when, and when you get choked out, ask Him for help. Say, Jesus, I can't do this without you. And He's asking you to bear fruit because Jesus loves you, but it's bigger than you. You see, our, our mission, the third part of our mission is to help people become who Jesus has called them to be. Jesus wants you to become something so amazing. And this word become is so awesome because it's become. You're not there yet. It's a process. So embrace the process because Jesus is with you every step of the way. He says, become who? Who are you? you? Maybe you're a teacher. Maybe you're a student. Maybe you're a mom. Maybe you're a husband. Maybe you're a friend. Whoever you are, Jesus wants to help you become who you are, who God has made you. He sees you and He notices you and He loves you. And, and, and it's Jesus who can. We can't. We can't do it, but, but He can. And He's called you because He loves you and, and because you belong to Him and because He notices you and He cares for you. Doesn't that feel good? And He's told you to be he hasn't given you a big grocery list, a big to-do list, a big don't list. He, he's concerned about you and your heart. He wants you to be who he's called you to be. So now it's, 
It's time. It's time to believe. It's time to grow roots. It's time to, to say no to the thorns and, and to say yes to God in helping you bear fruit because He, in the end, is the one that grows the fruit. I hope that today that we can all recognize a, a, a next step a next step in roots, a next step in growing fruit, a next step in in being planted. Because God has so much in store for you. But sometimes we need to just stop mixing and let it sit. Sometimes we need to go back to the instructions and see what we're missing. Sometimes we need to just surrender it to God. Say, God, I don't, I don't know what's going on in my life right now. I don't like all of it, but God, I know you have a plan. And put your life back in his hands. Because there's a big world out there that needs to know that Jesus loves them. And it starts with you. It starts with me. Jesus loves me, but it's bigger than me. Let's let the world know that there is a loving God out there that exists and doesn't just exist, but desires to see people change the world. What, what's, what's keeping us from being this kind of soil where, where seeds are able to, to grow in and thrive in and multiply in? This is the soil of a heart that loves Jesus more than anything else. Loves Jesus more than being a path. Loves Jesus more than the excitement of the day. Loves Jesus more than the, 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 the things of this world. You're asking, how, how can I be this soil? It's just that simple. Love Jesus more than anything else and see what he got, does in your life next. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for being a God that that gets us, that sees us, that knows us. Thank you for being a God that is patient with us, God, because we're so, we're so stubborn, we're so thick-headed, we're, we're so slow at times. We got you, you've broken it down. You've made it simple. God, we want to live the life that you have for us, a life that's thriving, a life that's leaving legacies, a life that has fruit, a life that will have somebody show up to our funeral because we cared and we poured out and we gave and we were selfless and we existed for more than just ourselves, Lord. But it can be hard. So God, help us to be planted. Help us to grow roots. God, give us opportunities and give us the courage to take those opportunities. And God, take, take our worries as we lay them before you, whatever they are. Our worries about tomorrow, our worries about a relationship, our worries that we have about a conversation or a doctor's visit, our, 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 our desires for things of this world. God, may our desire for you supersede anything else that we want in this world because we know that only you can supersede our expectations, our wildest dreams, and our imaginations, God. And God, I pray that if there's anybody here in this room that is yet to believe in you, that they would take that step today. So if that's you, I, I just ask that you would follow me in this prayer. Jesus, thank you for loving me. Jesus, I believe in you today. I believe that you are what my life needs to fulfill my purpose. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I want you to be my God. If you prayed that simple prayer today, just for the first time to, to follow Jesus, to believe in him, I ask you just to raise your hand Raise your hand right now, up high, so that we can see you, we can celebrate with you, so that we can resource you while the rest of us have our, our eyes closed and our heads bowed. I ask that you would raise your hand so we can give you a gift, a Bible, and some resources to help you along the way. God, thank you for you and how you always give yourself just at the right time. Today, help us take new steps in our life with you. 
Help us multiply and bear fruit for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.